reason I chose thy word is a light unto my path is because today we're going to use Joshua. And if you have a Bible, you can open it to Joshua 1. In Joshua 1, 3, it says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. So we have the promise of God that says every place we set our foot, God's going to give us. That's pretty important. Do you agree? So what I want you to think about today, and I pray right now over everyone here, including myself, I pray that at the end of today, we realize that God's word is so important, and his command says to meditate on it day and night. On our calendars, you have a scripture reading each day. Can you imagine if everyone in this church was reading the same scripture every day and meditating on it day and night? We learned how to pray. We've learned to pray for ourselves, to pray for others, to intercede and go to God for others. Now let's see how we know what good advice is versus godly advice. Are you ready? All right, so God says in Joshua 1, 7, be strong and very courageous. I wonder how many of us are really strong and courageous when things come to us, okay? Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. So, here's Joshua 1.8. Keep this book of the law. Let's read it together. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Stop there, please. Remember we talk about our words. We're going to go and have some fun in a minute. And it's going to really make you hopefully see, but it's fun. It's going to make you laugh because I want you to realize what we say when something happens. And I'm talking about we Christians, we Christians who love the Lord, we Christians who proclaim his power, we Christians who do things. And I think God's stopping me here and I'll just listen to him, okay? One of my granddaughters, um, Rich noticed on Facebook that there's a man posting her volleyball pictures that we don't know, okay? And he's putting her name on these pictures on Facebook. Now, our granddaughter is 16. She doesn't feel any fear from that, right? But her grandfather felt an alarming notice on that. Why would a 70-something-year-old man be taking pictures of a girl at a volleyball game and posting it on his Facebook page? Doesn't make much sense, does it? So last night I got woke up about 12.30 with almost like a fear about what could happen because of that. We all know there's human sex trafficking and things like that. And so what, what came on my mind is, why would this guy post that? And by posting it, you know where she goes to school, and so you know when she practices and all of that. So I got up, and I went out in my dining room, and I got God's word. And I read Psalm 91. And apparently he wants me to read that now because I didn't have a plan. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, I either believe that my granddaughter is covered under the shadow of the Almighty, or I don't, and I do. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The question is, Who's going to be with her every moment of every day to protect her from anything that might come against her? God. That's the only one that's there all the time. I can't be there. 
Rich can't be there. Her parents can't be there. Even her sisters and brothers can't protect her. Do you understand that? You get where I'm going? Yeah. But I can go to the Father and I can say, send angels to surround her and protect her because God's word tells me that that will happen. You see the difference? Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter. What does that tell me? Does she have to be worried? Uh -uh. We can be if we don't believe God's word. But his word says he's going to deliver her. And from the deadly pestilence. I love this part. Picture this. I want you to picture your own family and people that you're praying for. Okay? Can you do that? He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall find protection. Is that cool or what? Do you believe it? Because, see, sometimes our words say, oh, what if this would happen to this one? Or what if? I don't live by what ifs anymore because I believe God's word is. You shall not be, or his faithfulness shall be your shield and wall. If my granddaughter and my children and grandchildren have the shield of God protecting them, who am I to be afraid for them? Make sense? You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that pursues in darkness, nor of this destruction that strikes at noonday. I love seven. Read it with me. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Do you believe it? I do. I do. We can stop our worrying and meditate on his word and watch what our lips say and be careful that everything is written in this word that we never doubt it that we know it's true and then look what his promise says then you will be what prosperous and successful i have a question for you have you ever said Nothing good happens to me. Have you ever heard someone say that? Yeah. Every time I get money saved, something comes up. Have you ever said that? We were newly married probably about, I don't know, seven years, and we didn't have hardly anything. And I said that one time. We lived on Star Avenue. Do you remember that, Rich? And the refrigerator went out. And we had just saved a little bit of money. And I said, every time we save money, something happens. And I caught myself. And I said, oh, every time we save money, some, we have the money to go buy the refrigerator. What a difference. It changed me right then and there on Star Avenue when our refrigerator went out. And I'm remembering it today. You see, it's the way we look at things. Instead of complaining, we can turn it to praise, right? And I think that's what God's saying to us today. My son, this is Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. Next one. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to his sayings. Do not let them depart from our eyes. Does that mean we should be reading this? How are our eyes going to know God's word if we don't look into it? Keep them in the midst of your what? Heart. Heart. For they are life. What are they? Life. life to those who have them. And I love this part. Anybody need this? and help to all their flesh. Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. See, those are not just words. These are truth and life 
God's word is alive and active. I'm not going to condemn anyone in this room because I stand guilty at times too. Your own pastor. But if we are not in God's word every single day, what words are we going to proclaim? The more we're in his word, the more we're going to speak his word back so that we know without a shadow of a doubt. Okay. What does the world say? The world seems to have a louder voice, doesn't it? I think, actually, I love that little arrow. It's getting too loud. How many agree with that? Are you hearing God's word, or are you hearing the world louder? Normally. Okay, I told you we were going to have fun. Are you guys ready? Roll up your sleeves, if you have long sleeves. Okay. Each table has a couple pieces of paper. So Cheryl's going to help me with this. And she's going to go over by that microphone over there and turn it on. <coughs> and what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an example. And we're going to see what the world says about these different... I've got three examples. So at your table, you're going to tell on your paper what the world says. And then you're going to choose one person to share it with the mic. Because I want, I want us to be aware of what we're hearing every day. You with me? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. So here's our first example. I want you to picture your friend comes to you and they, they're complaining about their spouse. Now, no one in here ever hears that, right? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because you're funny. <laughs> All right. How many have ever heard this? When I ask my spouse to pray with me, they refuse. They don't even like to go to church. What would you tell them? All right, so here's what the world says. What's the louder voice? If you go to a friend and you say that, what are they going to tell you? Okay. What is the good advice that people give their friends when they say that? Now, this is not what you would tell them, not your godly advice, but I'm talking about what the world would tell them. Okay, who wants to come up from this table? I think you get picked on every time you come here. Yeah. Well, the world would say, oh, yeah, you poor thing. He's such a jerk. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Who's at that table? Teresa, what did your table say? <laughs> Joanna, are you coming up next? Come on up. Yeah. That's marriage. That's just how life goes. Okay. Oh. Good one. Okay. Betty, are you coming up for yours? Who's coming up for you? No. Just come on up. And if you're on that side, go over by Cheryl so we don't have to wait for you to walk up. Okay, the world would say um, it's a free choice and it's not a choice for the wife to make for herself. Okay. So pray without it. Oh, pray without it. <laughs> yeah. The world would say that, wouldn't they? Okay. Who's at this table? Um. Uh, the world could say, just leave him alone, you know, just keep the peace. Or who cares? It's not going to make a difference if he goes or if he stays home. It said what? Who cares? Who cares? Like, if, if he wants to stay home, let him. Who cares? Okay. All right, let's go look and see what God would say. You ready? Praising God and praying for your spouse is guaranteed to bring rewards. Amen. Yeah. For, here's another one. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. So God's promise is that if you pray, your spouse will get touched. That's his promise. The world offers so many things to temporarily satisfy our needs, doesn't it? Yeah. Temptations abound, but you are our shield and our defender. You triumph over every scheme of the enemy. What would happen if every marriage had at least one spouse speaking that for the other one? God.
God, I know there's temptations in the world, but I believe what you say. You are our shield and defender. I just read that in Psalm 91. You triumph over every scheme of the enemy. I am committed to this person because your word says that we are one. It is my job as a Christian to pray for my spouse, right? I love Genesis 50, 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. God will turn things to good that we don't even understand how he does it or why he does it. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my what? Praise. praise. In all things give praise. What would happen if every person at Table of Grace made a commitment today to stop saying anything negative about anyone else? Not just your spouse, about anyone else. The people in this congregation would be lifted up and they would be able to do more than they've ever dreamed because of the encouragement of all of us. Here's our next example. Ready, Bob? All right. Anybody know anyone in this category? My children are a mess. They don't listen, they don't work, they don't go to church, they do whatever <laughs> they want. Anybody know anyone like that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's have the spokespeople come on up to the mics real quickly. Who's who's talking at this time? Come on up. I can talk loud. Okay. Um, so when people say, um, like I've been in the past, saying my kids are out of control, like they don't listen, they don't obey. Like I found people saying the world saying, um, and that that's just the way. That's just the way that kids are. That's it's, it's a phase. They'll grow out of it. What did you expect? What did you sign up for? Oh, that's what good they one. Okay. They would blame the parents. It's your fault. You did a bad job. I love if you that would have one. done it better, maybe they would be better. Do you hear that a lot? Yeah. It's always parents' fault, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We kind of agreed on that as well. You raised them that way, so just you know, deal with it. Or kick them out and make them grow up. Yeah. I mean, you can't blame the parents <laughs> either because apparently the parents don't have it the word of God. They haven't been taught. Right. Any other thoughts back there? Because of change and the Bible isn't um, true because it, to us today it's because it's such an old writing. Ooh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Has anyone ever heard that? Yeah. 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 So that's what the world's saying, right? Okay. Let's go to what godly advice says. All right. If you have your Bibles, please go to Deuteronomy 28. And these are the blessings for obedience. You with me? Now it will be if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Where do we find his voice? In his word, right? Be careful to do what his commandments, which I am commanding you today. Now watch what the Lord's going to do. Then the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come to you and overtake you if you listen to the voice of your God, your Lord God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. For says your offspring will be blessed and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your flock, the increase of your herd, and the flocks of your sheep. Your basket and your kneading bowl will be blessed. 
you will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. And it goes on. The Lord's going to cause your enemies to be defeated. The Lord is going to do what you ask him when you're what? Obedient to him. Romans 15, 12 says, I am always a positive encourager. I love the fact that we realize the world puts blame. Thank you. As Christians, we're called to love. Amen. So when we see our friends struggling with their children, if we encourage them, if we pray with them, if we encourage those children, Romans 15, 12 says, I edify and build up. I never tear down and destroy. What do your words say? Amen. What do your words say? Amen. Our third and final example is, I'm so afraid of losing everything. I have to buy a security system. I hear that one all the time. And you know what's funny? I'm not putting security systems down, but I sort of am. <laughs> really you know <laughs> People are spending their money that could feed the children in Haiti to secure their dwelling that the angels can already do. I think Psalm 91 clearly said that. Do you know this church? Somebody came in here this week, and when they left, the door wasn't secure, and nothing was hung, and nothing was touched, and we found it, and big deal. Because we have angels all around here. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't pay for a security system for this church. What is somebody going to take that God won't replace? His word says that. And yet people are struggling financially because they're spending money for things that God's already given them. Just, just a thought. I don't have enough money. Okay? What does the Lord say? Okay. Come on up quick. Anyone that's got something they want to mention? What does the world oh. say? You can just power it out. Never, what do you guys there's say? never enough. There's never enough. Uh, when somebody complains about not having enough money, uh, I hear, well, then go get a better job. Go get a better job. How about that table, Ben? <laughs> Our okay. table said borrow. Yeah. Borrow. borrow. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Get in yeah. debt. Get another credit card. Yeah. Get another credit card. How about this table, Carol? Would well, you? We were thinking the same. We're on the same way. Okay, get another loan. You guys in the back, anything? What would the world say? Get a job. Get a job. Work harder. Work hard. Oh, I love that. Thanks, yeah, Mitch. Work, work harder. How many people are stuck in that? I got to work harder so I can have more things. Okay. How about Jim and Billy's table? What do they say? Nothing? Never enough money. Never enough. Never enough. Is there ever enough? No. 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 Has anybody been like me and you think, oh my, if I could just get a thousand dollars in the bank, I'll I'll be secure. Then you get a thousand and you think, oh, if I could get five hundred more. Yeah. Or five thousand. <laughs> then the refrigerator breaks, yeah? And then what? And then what? And then what? There's people with millions of dollars that don't have enough. When is it, when is it gonna be enough? All right? But the world tells you you've gotta have more. If you watch TV, is there ever a show that doesn't have a commercial? Always trying to sell you something, huh? So, and I love the when they try to sell you medicine. <laughs> and if you take this, you will die, and you will have this, and you will have. But call your doctor and make sure you get that medicine tomorrow. You know. And we listen to it. All right, let's see what God says. In the day of my trouble, I will what? Call you. To you. 
for you will Psalm 86, 7. My worrying and being anxious will not add a unit of measure to my stature, didn't work, did it? <laughs> or to the span of my life, Matthew 6, 27. All right, let's read Mark 4, 19 together. I will not let the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke what? What? The word making it unfruitful. How many think it might be a good idea to meditate on his word? How, raise your hands. Now, whose choice is it if you do it or not? Put it on your calendar. Meditate on it day and night. You won't be complaining because you're going to know the promises. How many of you have a little space or a war room or whatever you want to call it in your house? When you go to that space, Yvette, it's different than anywhere else in your house. Am I right? And you can get into prayer if you have a space. I don't care if it's just a chair or a spot outside or wherever you choose to go. Go find a spot. Withdraw from noise and demands so you can focus on God. Does anyone in here have a TV set that doesn't have an off button? <laughs> when those commercials come on, you can mute them. You can shut them off. You can actually say, is this show really putting the right ideas in my head or am I wasting my time? Take Jesus' attitude of regular communion with the Father. Do you know Jesus? Jesus went away often just to be with the Father. Seek the Lord before your busy schedule takes over your thoughts. Reflect on the priorities Jesus had for his life. I got news for you. Some of our priorities are not really necessary. Some of our life could be changed and some things eliminated to get in tune with God and see all that he has for us. Right now I lift my hands and I ask you to do the same and lift them over every person in this room. Lord, I pray that we all determine to pray on a more regular basis, not just in times of crisis.